Hey boys and girls, welcome to your interactive read aloud time. This week we're going to begin a new book, The Branch. This story is written by Muriel Messner and it's illustrated by Pierre Pratt. Remember this is your title page. On the title page you can usually find an image um, and on this one it looks like we have a little girl. She's standing in a Looks like she's standing on a branch in a tree. Then all we can see behind her is sky. We've got the author, the illustrator, and down here at the bottom we've got the publisher. This is the people or the company that took the words from the author and the pictures from the illustrator and then made it into an actual book that we could buy from a store. So before we get started with the branch, I want us to look at some vocabulary words. Four words that I want you to pay attention to as we read, okay? I want you to listen out for them. The first word is castle. Now, I'm sure we've all um, heard people talk about sand castles or kings and queens living in a castle. A castle is a very large, impressive house, and it sometimes has towers in the top, okay? So castles look a little bit different from our houses that we live in around here um, because most of our houses around here do not have towers. So pay attention for the word castle. Um, the second word is ache, and you can tell in this image that this little girl is in pain, she's got her mouth open, her eyes closed, she's crying, and she's got a pink or a red toe. If you have an ache, you are suffering with pain. And we can have aches anywhere. Sometimes we get headaches, sometimes we get um, our feet ache. Um, so any, if you have any kind of ache, like this little girl has in her toe, um, it means you have some sort of pain. You are suffering from pain, okay? The third word is guard. Now, in this picture, we have um, a guard. Um, usually, these people are there to defend or protect something or someone. Um, you might see guards at um, football games, or if you were a king or a queen, you might have guards that are guarding the castle to protect it, to um, keep you know anything bad that might come that way, um, keep whatever's in there safe. So that's a guard. And your last word is potential, potential. If you have potential or if something has potential, that means um, you have the ability to happen or make it real. It's worth something if you have potential. So right here, this guy's pointing and he said, you're hired because if you have good potential, you would be a good employee to have You would um, for, that, for a particular job if you have potential. So that means you have the ability to happen or to make it real, okay? All right, so those are our four words that we're going to pay attention to as we read. Let's say them one more time. Castle, ache, guard, and potential. And before we begin, I want to see if we can just kind of, um, we're not going to really take a picture walk, but I, I do want us to look at the front cover and the title page and just kind of um, make some um, inferences or some predictions about what we think might happen in the story. So um, the title is The Branch. Um, I know that a branch is something that grows from a tree trunk. So this looks like some branches here on the front cover. Um, I also see some rooftops of some houses. It looks like it's a neighborhood. Um, it Maybe it's raining. It's definitely raining. You can see the rain coming down. Maybe it's um, dark time or getting dark. Um, there are lights on in the windows. So maybe it's later on in the evening. And then it looks like a little girl is she's smiling and she's looking up. I don't know if she's looking up at the sky or maybe she's looking up at the out at the rain or maybe looking up at the tree branch. I mean, the title is the branch. So maybe our story is going to be all about this tree branch. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, she looks happy, though. She's smiling. I wonder what she's thinking about. Let's look at the, see if we can earn, get any more information from the title page. So once again, I think that might be the same little girl on the front cover. Um, here she is. It's not raining and it's not nighttime. It's day. And she's actually standing on the branch. Hmm. It kind of, it might be the same branch. I'm not sure. Let's read to find out. All right, here we go. It's past my bedtime, but I can't sleep. Maybe it's because I'm too excited about the holidays. Maybe it's because of the sound of the icy rain hitting my window. Icy rain, that sounds really cold. When I finally doze off, 
I dream that I'm wearing a crown of icicles. My tree is my castle. My branch is my throne. I am queen of the storm. Now, did you guys hear our word? Castle, let's read that sentence again. When I finally doze off, I dream that I'm wearing a crown of icicles. My tree is my castle. My branch is my throne and I am queen of the storm. So here we are, here's our tree. Here's the little girl. She's dreaming that she's um, sitting on her throne on the branch. She's wearing a um, crown of icicles and she's the queen of the storm. You can see down here, it must be, they look frozen or they're slipping down or something. It looks cold. Creak, crack, crash, thud. My eyes snap open. What's that noise? I throw back my covers and rush to the window. What do you guys think these noises are? Creak, crash, crack, thud. What could that be? I wonder if it's some trees outside from uh, maybe coming down from the storm. Everything outside is covered in ice. It looks like the entire neighborhood has been wrapped in a heavy blanket of diamonds. It's beautiful, but a little scary too. So it sounds like to me that maybe they have just had an ice storm in their hometown. Now that's this that kind of weather we don't really see very often. Um, I've never seen an ice storm before. Um, so down where we live, this is weather that we probably wouldn't see um, very, very rarely. So, um, so what's happened is um, everything looks like diamonds because the sun reflecting on the ice that has um, frozen onto the trees and to the homes and the ground and the cars, everything, it's reflecting and so it looks shiny like diamonds. I wonder why she says it's a little bit scary. She says it's very pretty, very beautiful, but I wonder why she says it's a little bit scary too. Hmm. Mom stands next to me at the window. Her breath makes a cloud on the glass. Have you ever done that before? I have. We're lucky the whole thing didn't come down, she says. What came down, I asked. That's when I see it. At the foot of my tree lies a big, broken, branch. I rushed down the stairs and out the door. That was the branch I sat on, jumped on, played under. It was my castle, my spy base, my ship. Oh goodness, here she is running down the stairs to go see it. And now there's her tree. That's what she calls it. That's where she plays and jumps and pretends. And there's her branch, the one that she loves the most. Now, how, does she, how do you think she feels? She doesn't look too happy, does she? I try to pick up my branch, but it's too heavy. I run my fingers along the bumpy ice. Can we fix it? I'm afraid not, says mom. Can I keep it? It's just a branch. It's not just a branch to me. I played on this branch all the time. Mom touches the splintery part on the trunk where the branch used to be. So there, this would be the splintery part where it broke away from the tree trunk. All right, you can keep it for a little while, but I, but I want to keep it forever. We'll see, says mom, squeezing my hand. I know that squeeze, it means probably not. What do y'all think she can do with a broken branch? What's she gonna do with it? She can't climb it anymore. She might could sit on it in her room. As I look around, I see more broken branches. In the yards, in the streets, stuck upside down in the trees. I watch my neighbors digging and scraping. They gather broken branches and carry them to the curb, making big heaps like beaver dams in the city. So you can see all of the people in, it's not just her tree that is broken. All of the trees, when the ice, um, the wet ice got froze, it froze, it got heavy. And so if the tree branch was weak, 
um, and there was too much weight on it, then it would cause it to break. And so that's what's happened in the whole city. Everybody's out picking up twigs and branches um, and sticks that have broken off from their original tree trunk. Workers in shiny coats are clearing the road. They climb ladders, fix wires, wrap yellow tape around trees, and put orange cones on the sidewalk. Everybody is so busy. I wish I could climb my tree to watch them, but I can't. My next door neighbor, Mr. Frank, is out with his chainsaw. The buzzing makes my ears ache. Makes her ears ache. There's our second word. Remember, ache is when you are suffering from pain. So if she is hearing Mr. Frank with the chainsaw and her ears are aching, that means it's making her ears hurt. She has pain in her ears. But I won't go back inside. I block my ears and I guard my branch. Hmm, there's our third word, guard. She guards her branch. I want to make sure nobody comes to take it or chop it up. Because remember, all the people in the um, town are cleaning up the broken branches. So she's afraid if she leaves her branch behind or sets it down, that somebody might think it's just trash and throw it away or cut it up to try to get it out of the way. So she wants to guard it. That means she wants to protect it. Remember, like the guards that might stand outside of a castle, um, she wants to guard her branch and keep it safe. So here she is. She's holding her ears on the other side of the fence. There's Mr. Frank trimming up where his trees have um, um, gotten broken. And you can see other people in town are cleaning up and fixing the wires, scraping ice off their trucks. It's really cold. Finally, Mr. Frank stops sawing when he catches sight of me over the fence. Why such the long face? That means, why are you so sad? My favorite branch broke. Oh, I see. So what are you gonna do with it? I shrug, it's just a branch. Just a branch? But it was your favorite, right? I nod, that's what I thought. That branch is full of potential. What's potential? Hmm. There's our word. So Mr. Frank has said, your branch is full of potential and the little girl does not know what that means. She says, what's potential? And guess what he says? It means it's worth keeping. So if something has potential, it is worth keeping. So here she is talking to Mr. Frank, showing him her favorite branch that has been broken. And he tells her that it has potential. It's worth keeping. Mr. Frank hands me a small piece of wood what do you see? A piece of wood? Sure, but what could it become? Mom comes over carrying mugs of hot chocolate. So here is Frank showing her this piece of wood. Hi Frank, I see part of your tree came down too. Yep, that was quite a storm we had. We're guessing what's hiding inside the wood, I tell Mom. Mr. Frank chuckles at, Mom, at Mom's puzzled look. I build things from salvaged wood, says Mr. Frank. With some imagination, each broken piece can become something great. Now, right here where Mr. Frank says, I build things with salvaged wood. If something is salvaged, it's saved. So something that might look just like a little twig to him, he takes it and creates it into something new. Um, he just he says he uses his imagination to do that. He said he can take broken pieces of wood and turn them into something new and every piece is different. I look at my favorite branch. It has potential. Remember, it's worth keeping. I concentrate, I squint, and then I have an idea. I know what my branch can become. I knew you would, said Mr. Frank. What is it, asked Mom. Is it a walking stick, a coat rack, a birdhouse? No, it's even better, I say. I cut my hand and I whisper into Mr. Frank's ear. Oh, good idea, he says but I don't know how to make it. I can help you, says Mr. Frank. I have the tools and I have the time. All you need is a little elbow grease. Do you know what that means when someone says you need a little elbow grease? You need, you, you need your hands, you need to work for it. Put a little elbow grease in it so you can work hard. You gotta put all these ideas together. So here they are. There's mom, here's the branch. 
Here she is talking to Mr. Frank about her idea. What do you think her idea is? Mom asked, it, asked her was she gonna turn it into a walking stick and she said no. Then she said, what about a coat rack? And then she said no. And then she said, well, you could turn it into a birdhouse and she said no. What do you think her idea is? What could she turn her branch into? Hmm. Mr. Frank's workshop smells sweet like Sunday breakfast. We work together on weekends and sometimes after school. He shows me how to use the tools to make my branch into something new. So here they are working in his tool shed. They've got the branch there. We still don't know what she's gonna make out of it or make it into. We draw plans, we measure, we saw, we saw some more, we dry the wood, then we wait and wait and wait. Hmm, still don't know what they could be building. We plane, that means they're, they're leveling it. We make holes, hmm, so they're making something that has holes in it and they're making something um, even and flat. We sand it, that means they're making it smooth. Then we varnish it, three coats to make it last a long time. Varnish is like a stain or a paint that you might put it on, put on there on the wood to protect it. And you can see right here, Mr. Frank is the painting it on there, but little girl does not think it smells good. All right, and now they're talking and she's smiling and they're looking out the window pointing to the tree. Hmm, what is she doing? What is she telling him about the tree for? They already have the broken branch that they've turned into something. It wasn't just a branch. It was my branch. The one I sat on, jumped from, played under. It was my castle, my spy base, and my ship. Now look, on this page right here, they're looking out the window. She's pointing to the tree. Now on this page, they're outside. Now Mr. Frank is climbing the tree. She's looking up at him. What do you notice in his hand? It looks like a piece of wood and maybe a rope. I wonder if that's what they built out of the old branch. Let's see. It still is. So what did Mr. Frank and the little girl make out of the old fallen broken branch? They made it into a swing and they put it back into her same tree that she could still enjoy it from. Awesome. So as we wrap up today, I want you to think about this question. What part of the tree prevented the entire tree from falling down? So I want you to think the entire tree did not fall down in this story. What part of the tree prevented or kept the entire tree from falling down? Only one branch fell out of the tree. So I want you to see, think about that question. I'm gonna ask it one more time. What part of the tree prevented the entire tree from falling down? All right, guys, we will check you tomorrow with part two of the branch.